Hi, my name's Ben Nelson, and I built my own electric motorcycle. And if I can do it, so can you. So you want to build your own electric motorcycle, but you don't know where to start. That's okay, that's why I'm here. What I'm going to do is take you through every step that it took me to build my own electric motorcycle, which you see behind me right here. This happens to be a 1981 Kawasaki KZ 440, but it could have been just about any motorcycle. Electric motorcycles are great because they're a lot simpler than electric cars in terms of there's no power steering, there's no power brakes, you don't even need a transmission. So it takes care of a lot of those things that are a little bit daunting to convert a car to electric, is severely simplified uh, by converting a motorcycle. Another thing is motorcycles tend to be really loud. Uh, they actually have a lot of maintenance with them in terms of uh, winterizing, bringing the motorcycle out in spring. A lot of that's completely done away with when you have an electric motorcycle. No mufflers, for example. Now what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take you through all the steps that's going to be uh, how you find a cycle frame, uh, choosing a motor, mounting the motor to the frame through a custom adapter plate, choosing the batteries, mounting the batteries to the frame, cabling up the batteries, cabling up the controller, uh, every last little thing that you're, you're going to need to put this together. That also includes um, going over legal, insurance, registration, all those sorts of things. And then of course we'll also go for a ride on the electric motorcycle. Another great web resource that we don't want to overlook is the EV album. It's a listing of thousands of electric vehicles, mostly homemade, on the web that show you what batteries, what motor, uh, what make and model uh, is used as a conversion. Now if you go there and you do a search by motorcycle, you'll be able to see other people's electric motorcycles and see what motors, batteries, and controllers they use. And by doing that, you'll get a good overview of the types of projects other people have done, and that'll give you a better sense of how you might want to build your own electric motorcycle. So it's just an overview on this motorcycle project. This is a 1981 Kawasaki KZ 440 motorcycle. Originally it had a 440cc engine, uh, twin cylinders, and a traditional manual transmission. Now instead it runs on batteries. That's 48 volts. It's four 12 volt batteries run in series. Uh, typically these batteries can take me 20 to 30 miles per charge depending on the weather, terrain, speed, driving style, and some other variables. Uh, a couple other things you'll notice about this motorcycle, it no longer has mufflers, and even though it has the gas tank on here, that's hollow, that's in fact now just a cover that covers uh, some of the electronics, the battery charger, a few things like that. Also, it keeps the motorcycle looking nice. Uh, the top speed on this motorcycle is 45 miles per hour. Now that's not because electrics are slow and they can't go any faster than that. It's because I live on the corner of a 25 zone and a 45 mile per hour zone. So I figured I'd rather have some really good acceleration and a lower top speed because I primarily use this motorcycle in the city. Now you'll see I've got a rather small front gear and a rather large rear one. That gives me a great big gear reduction, which gives me some fantastic low end acceleration. Uh, the primary uh, limitation in terms of speed is going to be based on your system voltage and your gear ratio. By going to a higher system voltage, you'll end up with a higher top speed on a DC motor system. Some other unique features of this motorcycle are built into the tank as a 300 amp ammeter. I also have a green power indicator light because since the motorcycle is uh, essentially silent when stopped, it does make noise when it's moving, but when it's stopped, it doesn't make any noise. So that's a power indicator to uh, show that everything is on. Also, this motorcycle has an electronic throttle. I'll show you how to install that. On the back, I've got hobbyist plates. Uh, nothing terribly fancy there, but one thing that does do is that saves me uh, money on registration every year that I dr drive this cycle. 
And over on the reverse side here, you've got a pretty good view of the permanent magnet DC motor and the Alltrax uh, 48 volt 300 amp controller. And then again over here you'll notice that there's uh, no exhaust. Everything's really uh, very simple. Uh, it's as straightforward as just batteries, a motor, a controller, and then a chain going to the back wheel. So you can see an electric motorcycle really is that simple. Now in this video I'm going to do a couple of different things to teach you how to build an electric motorcycle. To start with, some of it is going to be right here in sort of a classroom style of instruction because this is going to be the easiest way to show off some different parts, show you motors, talk about batteries, so you can learn how all those different things work. And then we're also going to be going into the shop where we're doing the actual work of cutting, bolting, welding, and putting the whole motorcycle together. After that we'll go out for a ride. But to start with, how do you even know which motorcycle to, to use to convert to electric in the first place? I mean, some have got to make better conversions than others, right? Well, that's true. So let's go outside and we'll take a look at a gasoline motorcycle and decide if it would make an appropriate electric conversion. So here we have a real-world example of a gasoline-powered motorcycle that we can take a look at and see if it would make a good candidate for an electric conversion. Uh, just to look at to start with, it's in pretty good overall condition. Uh, the chrome is pretty shiny. There's very little rust on it. Um, just a little bit on the muffler over here, which is typical. Hot components tend to corrode faster. Um, other than that, though, it looks fairly good overall. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the individual characteristics here. Uh, for one thing, right away I notice it has passenger pegs and a passenger seat. And well, that's not... Uh, uh, necessarily uh, a, a very specific thing in what the weight capacity is going to be. Typically if a motorcycle is designed to carry a passenger it's going to already have the strength of the frame and the strength of the suspension for carrying the additional weight of some batteries. Another thing I notice is the actual design of the motorcycle. We have a pair of uh, tubes that make up the frame coming down in front and then the transmission and engine and other components bolt right into that. So we have a number of good attachment points for both the batteries and the electric motor that we can see are points where the engine and transmission already mount into the frame. Another thing I want to test out is that uh, most of the components actually work. Uh, for example, if I turn on the ignition, the starter works, uh, the headlights, turn lights, and tail signals all work on this motorcycle. Now it does have a problem with the carburetors and because of that the motorcycle won't start and run, but that does mean that I'll be able to pull out the transmission and engine and sell those as parts, um, yet everything else on here I'll be able to reuse uh, for the electric motorcycle conversion. So I'm going to say that overall I think this would make a pretty good motorcycle candidate for an electric conversion. Now this one happens to be a 1981 Kawasaki KZ440. Is that important? Not particularly, except that in this case it's the exact same make, model, and year as the motorcycle that I'm going to convert to electric. Before we start the conversion by removing the engine and transmission, there's one more thing we still need to do. That is, mark where the output gear of the transmission is compared to the frame. By using a grease pencil or silver marker directly on the frame, It'll show us where we need to later mount the electric motor for the chain, rear suspension, and drive sprocket to all line up. Once that's done, you can drain and remove the gas tank, and then remove the engine and transmission and sell them. Now you have a plain frame ready for the electrical components. The next two big things you're going to want to know is what motor you're going to use and what batteries you're going to use. Also, how many batteries, because the size of the frame is really going to determine uh, the number and the size of batteries that you're going to use. So let's take a look at motors and then batteries.